Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today we are going to discuss the natural history of disease. This is a very commonly asked long question. Apart from that, natural history of disease is also the basis of understanding the preventive as well as the curative approach for different communicable and non-communicable diseases. So that is why we all must understand what is natural history of disease. So what is natural history of disease? It is often defined as a natural course that a disease would take when it has not been affected by any treatment or any other intervention. So that means if a person is infected and develops a disease or maybe he is exposed to the risk factor and develops a non-communicable disease. So in that case, how the disease is going to progress naturally in that human being, provided we have not given him any treatment or taken any intervention to treat that disease or to minimize his suffering, etc. So that is natural history of disease. So the natural course that disease will take, that is why the natural history of disease and each disease has its own unique natural history. So for different diseases, the natural history of disease will be different. Even for a single disease, the natural history of disease will be different in different individual. Disease occurs from complex interaction between agent host and environment. By agent, we mean the pathogens for communicable diseases. That means the bacteria, virus, fungus, uh, parasites, etc or the risk factors leading to different non-communicable diseases. The host can be human since we are talking about uh, medical profession here uh, among the human population. Uh, for animals also the uh, individual animal can be the host and also the environment. Environment means not only the surrounding of the host but also uh, the different uh, cultural beliefs. Uh, customs, practices, socioeconomic status, etc., that can have some effect on the causation of disease. So, all these comprise the environment component. And there is obviously some importance of time, and all these things have been discussed in details in our previous video. So, for a disease to occur, there must be some complex interaction between the agent, host, and environment. Natural history of disease signifies the way in which a disease evolves over time from the earliest stage of its pre-pathogenesis phase to its termination as recovery, disability or death in the absence of treatment or prevention. So again, the same thing has been mentioned here. Natural history of disease means how a disease evolves over time, right? And it starts from the stage of pre-pathogenesis, then there is stage of pathogenesis. Uh, followed by the termination of the disease and how a disease can terminate it can terminate by spontaneous recovery or maybe the disease uh, turns into a chronic state leading to some kind of disability and sometimes it can also lead to death uh, and of course there must not be any kind of treatment or preventive measures or interventions uh, that should be followed uh, so as to know the natural history of disease. All right. So the natural history of disease consists of two phases. I already mentioned in the last slide, the stage of pre-pathogenesis that occurs outside the human body uh, in the environment and the stage of pathogenesis that occurs inside the man. Uh, so what is the stage of pre-pathogenesis? This refers to the period uh, preliminary to the onset of disease in man. So just before the disease occurs in man, uh, there is the stage of pre-pathogenesis and during this stage the disease agent that means the pathogen or the risk factor has not entered the man or you can say the man has not been exposed to the risk factors but the factors which favors it 
its interaction with the human host are already existing in the environment so uh, any any kind of uh, factor that can uh, help in interaction between the pathogen and the human host these factors are already there okay but the interaction has not occurred yet and that is why the disease process has not started yet so th this period is the pre pathogenesis phase this situation is frequently referred to as man in the midst of disease or man exposed to the risk of disease so he is already at risk the mere presence of agent host and favorable environment in the pre pathogenesis phase is not sufficient to start the disease so even though there is the uh, human host uh, who is supposed to be uh, uh, have the disease and uh, there is also the agent factor the environment uh, the disease does not start just like that there has to be some complex interaction between the agent host and environment and only then the disease process will start until then there is only pre pathogenesis phase and the disease may or may not occur unless there is interaction between these three factors the agent factor host factor and the environment factor next starts the stage of pathogenesis or the pathogenesis phase and it starts when there is entry of the agent or the pathogen in the susceptible human host now everything i am saying here is in context of communicable disease for non communicable disease we have to replace the agent or the pathogen by the risk factors okay so what happens here in the pathogenesis phase the agent enters the human body and after entering it multiplies and induces some changes some pathological changes that means at the cellular level as well as some physical uh, physiological changes in the human host after some period of time which can be few hours to few days or few months depending on the disease depending on the pathogen there is development of signs and symptoms so the time gap between the entry of the uh, causative agent or pathogen to the time when the signs and symptoms develop for the first time this time gap is known as incubation period something that has been explained in details in previous videos and i am sure you people already have uh, some idea about the incubation period so once the signs and symptoms have developed that means the disease process has already started and uh, with further progression we shall have the termination of the disease so what can be the possible outcomes of the disease it can be spontaneous recovery uh, there can be disability and can also be death so these are the three possible outcome of the disease the pathogenesis phase may be modified by intervention measures such as immunization and chemotherapy so of course these are important uh, these are the measures that we can take to stop the progression of the disease in the pathogenesis phase so that the disease does not progress any further and complications or even death does not occur so these are the possible interventions okay uh, at the stage of pathogenesis it is very difficult to predict how the host body is going to interact or react to the uh, infection that means the entry of the infectious agent or the pathogen so that is why depending on how this host body is reacting uh, we can have some clinical or subclinical cases uh, we know what is clinical that means disease has occurred and also there is sign symptoms but in subclinical cases there is no sign symptoms we can have typical or atypical clinical features so typically something that we already know that if a person is suffering from this disease he will show these and these sign symptoms when the sign symptoms are not typical for the particular disease so we can have atypical cases and sometimes the person does not even develop disease or may develop disease then he can get cure but the pathogen can survive in his body and he will be releasing or you know uh, spreading this infectious agent into the environment to other people for a long period of time so he can become a carrier without uh, uh, developing any clinical disease or sometimes he can also develop some clinical disease so as i mentioned so depending on the way our body react to the infection we can have different kind of situations this is one uh, figure that we you will come across uh, any edition of park's textbook and here the natural history of disease has been explained 
so uh, first we have the stage of pre pathogenesis where we have agent host and environmental factor when they interact together only then the disease agent is able to enter the human host so that start uh, it starts the period of pathogenesis after entering it interact with the host uh, induces some host reaction then there is stage of early pre early pathogenesis discernible early lesions advanced disease and convalescence so the uh, clinical horizon starts here that means the clinical features uh, starts developing developing on after this particular horizon there can be sign symptoms leading to illness there can be disability defect and chronic state sometimes illness can have spontaneous recovery or it can uh, progress further to develop disability and can be also fatal so the person can also die uh, let us not look at this uh, bottom two rows uh, these are the levels of prevention and modes of intervention which we shall discuss in details in our future videos but more or less this is the uh, stage of pre pathogenesis and stage of pathogenesis for natural history of disease now this was all about the communicable disease what about non communicable disease almost same but uh, in in case of non communicable diseases like coronary heart disease hypertension diabetes cancer etc uh, the early pathogenesis phase is sometimes known as the pre symptomatic phase and during this phase there is no manifestation of the disease of course that is why pre symptomatic and uh, the pathological changes that occurs during this pre symptomatic phase uh, are at the a level which is below the clinical horizon that is why we do not have any clinical feature when the clinical stage begins that means the clinical features starts to appear there is recognizable sign symptoms and by this time the disease has already advanced uh, quite well and that is why this is also known as late pathogenesis phase and in many chronic diseases it is quite difficult and often not understood uh, how the agent host and environment interact to cause the disease okay and this is another uh, table tabular form uh, showing the different stages of natural history of disease it has been taken from the textbook of public health and community medicine by fmc pune a fantastic book uh, so what we we see here is first we have the stage of positive health so agent host and environment they are in perfect balance and that is why we are not at risk and there is no disease then there is stage of prepathogenesis also known as the stage of susceptibility so what happens here the balance between the agent host and environment is disturbed conditions have been created for disease process to start however pathological processes have not still started because in prepathogenesis phase the agent factor is not yet inside the host so that is why there is no pathological changes or the changes at the cellular level in the human host after this the stage of pathogenesis starts first we have the early pathogenesis stage also known as the asymptomatic stage the pathological process has started because the agent has entered into the host however there are no signs and symptoms and detection is only possible by specialized pathological or investigative studies so since there is no sign symptoms so we cannot clinically diagnose the case if there is any screening method any specialized pathological or investigation um, available to detect the disease at the stage only then we can diagnose the disease then there is early discernible changes now the signs and symptoms will develop only mild and non specific sign symptoms and even based on this sign symptoms it is not very easy to uh, detect the disease unless the person is an expert he has excellent clinical acumen or there is some specialized equipment available after this there is full blown disease or the classical disease and during this stage the detection of the disease is quite easy based on the clinical features also availability on different investigative procedure after that there is termination of the disease either there can be complete recovery or there can be uh, uh, chronic status of the disease leading to different kind of disability so life with residual disability and there can be death so this is all about natural history of disease you have learned what is natural history of disease what are the different stages what happens in the stage of 
pre-pathogenesis and stage of pathogenesis etc this is often asked as a long question so if you understand this basic concept you will be able to write it so with this we conclude today's session and if you like the video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video